Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 7 Video 4 on resistance and powering using hull speed. We've seen how we can use the regression methods for resistance prediction. Now let's take a look at the slender body method. This is a first principles method using potential flow calculations and it's very suitable for application to slender vessels, a length to beam greater than about 5 and it can be applied to monohulls or multi-hulls. Hull speed automatically generates a mesh group on each hull. So you can see here we have a trimaran with a mesh on the outside of the center hull as well as a mesh on the outside of the demi hulls. The only limitation there is that those local demi hulls must have local symmetry. That means they must be symmetrical. And in fact, you can see that the orange mesh is just generated on one side of each hull. That mesh is generated pretty much automatically for you. Uh, you should check it after it's generated to be sure that you're happy with it. And there are a small number of manual changes you can make if you like, but generally the automatic settings will be fine for you. With the slender body method, it's going to calculate the wave resistance for us, but uh, if we want to calculate the aerodynamic appendage or skin friction resistances, then we can enter the additional input data values for those particular additions. If we look at the mesh itself, there's really three parts of the mesh that are interesting. If we take a look at the bow first, we can see that the mesh essentially is projected onto the hull transversely. And so any points that fall off of the boundaries of the hull are just projected onto the centre line at an offset of zero. So the mesh is projected on, it wraps its way around the hull and then just lies on offset of zero on the centre line. If we have a, an immersed transom on our vessel, then there are a couple of different options. The first one is called a virtual appendage, and this is a technique developed by one of our software developers. And uh, it's a method for simulating the flow behind the immersed transom. And essentially it extends the mesh from the transom aft, I think it's about five or six uh, transom widths aft of the vessel, and uh, it allows the flow to smoothly transition from the immersed transom back to the center line. If you're not sure whether you want to use that approach or not, then just try it with or without. But tank testing that was done in conjunction with this research shows that it does give good results for both monohulls and multi-hulls. If you decide that you don't want to use that virtual appendage approach and you just want to terminate your mesh abruptly at the transom, you can do that by just setting the aft extents of the mesh to a point about 100 mils aft of the transom. Once we run the slender body method, we will be able to review our results. And as I mentioned, there's really two components. The energy and the free surface wave pattern is generated using the Michelle approach to potential flow. It's an approach that's been around for a long time and is a well-established method for potential flow. And the viscous effects of uh, resistance will be calculated using the ITTC, the International Towing Tank Conference and a form factor to adjust those values. And of course, we can review the data in our usual data sheets and graphs. So let's go over to hull speed now and take a look at the type of vessel that we might apply the slender body method to. So here we see a wave piercing ferry. If we uh, turn off the rendering and just look at the immersed sections, we can see that it has very slender hull. Uh, we look at that in plan, we can see just how slender they are. And uh, hull speed will measure the vessel as usual. But really it's the mesh that we're interested in. So if we turn off the sections there, and first of all we choose the method that we want to use. So we'll turn on the slender body method. While we're doing that, we'll choose the type of form factor we want to use for the viscous resistance. There's actually a specific form factor for catamarans developed by Molland, which takes into account some of the viscous interaction. So we'll use that factor. And we can display the slender body mesh. So you can see the orange meshes that are shown on the vessel here. And if I zoom in for a closer look on the aft end of the transom, you can see the virtual appendage that's generated aft of the immersed transom on this vessel. If I do want to adjust any of the parameters on that mesh, I can open up the slender body analysis geometry command. And we'll see that we've got one mesh here for the demi hull. And uh, we can control what type of section is used to form the mesh, how many sections are used to create the mesh, and so on. Most of the time, the default values are going to work fine for you. Uh, the default values will create a nicely structured mesh where the uh, uh, 
panels on the mesh are, are nicely shaped and have a good aspect ratio. If you did want to terminate the mesh just uh, after the transom, then this aft setting on the mesh is the one that you would set to be about 100 mils after the transom to terminate the mesh at that point. But I'm just going to go with the standard mesh. If I go to the analysis menu and choose solve resistance analysis, then it will run through the potential flow calculations and I can see the results in my results window and graph as usual. So we can see the resistance changing with speed. Now I've done a very low speed regime here, so I'm going to change my speeds to a higher speed regime, say from uh, 12 to 22 knots, rerun my resistance analysis, and then see the revised speed curve. We see some waves in the speed curve there due to the different uh, wave effects along the length of the vessel. So using the slender body method is fast and easy. We'll see in the next video how we can use it to visualize wave making and weight generation. Thank you for watching.